uh, very glad to join you all. Uh, and uh, my understanding is that uh, my good friend uh, and future NAR president, uh, Kenny Parcell is in the audience and certainly, you know, he is uh, volunteering his time right and left constantly uh, on the lookout on behalf of all the real estate professionals out there. Uh, so glad to join and furthermore, very happy to join where Utah, central Utah is one of the fastest growing markets in the country. Let me put on the screen, so hopefully you can see it uh, on the, your end. And if somebody can just give me a little cue to say you can see it on the screen. Okay, I will go as if you are able to see it. So uh, the housing market has been uh, quite fabulous. Um, and certainly unexpected during the pandemic. Uh, if we remember the first few months of the pandemic lockdown, great uncertainty. How do we live our daily life? How long is it going to last? When will the business will return back to normal? And the incredible part was when the economy reopened and Utah was one of the first state to reopen its economy, uh, unlike many other states, when it opened, consumers were witnessing record low mortgage rates and falling mortgage rates. So not only did the home sales recover, but as you can see, it went way above pre-pandemic levels. But what we are seeing in recent months is some degree of topping out. The home sales are actually not as strong as what it had been during the autumn months. Say the year over year changes, uh, it had been 20% gain, but in recent months, uh, we are showing only about 5% gain from one year ago. Uh, and furthermore, uh, in the latest, uh, I think the, your data in the central Utah, uh, that you are actually seeing slightly lower activity compared to pre-pandemic levels. Um, but uh, this does not mean that somehow the buyers are stepping away. If we look at the newly constructed home sales market, the new home sales, it is holding on fine. I mean, it represents about 10% of the marketplace, but it's holding fine, indicating that whatever the builders bill, even with the challenges of the lumber prices, uh, an escalation clause with uncertainty about the material prices, they tack that on and they're ready buyers. So the buy, so uh, builders are having no trouble selling their home even with the price escalation. But the reason why the home sales are not clicking as strongly as before is this chart. Record low inventory. We have never seen this level of insufficient number of homes on the market. First, some of your clients, they are Googling into their search engine. Are we in a housing market bubble? Just show them this chart. We have record low inventory, completely different say 2006, 2007 period when we had about four or five times more homes for listing. So this is a complete contrast to back then Nothing concerning about whether or not uh, the home prices would decline because we simply don't have enough homes for sale. Supply shortage means prices increase and certainly not decrease. If we look at the price category as to where the inventory is most acutely short, we are finding that it is on the starter homes, lower price range, simply not available. But as we move up the price scale, the inventory is less of a decline. And when the very top million dollars and over, we actually have more inventory today compared to one year ago. So it's implying that the inventory situation is essentially at the low end starter home markets. And where are the sales clicking and not clicking? Well, in the areas where inventories are sufficient or the decline has been rather uh, manageable or modest, home sales are still rising. But in the category where homes are simply not available, inventory, you can see because of the falling inventory, sales are actually lower. I'm very concerned about 100,000 to 250,000 because this would be typical starter home 
But the starter home, lack of inventory, now the first time buyers having extreme difficulty entering the marketplace. Trade up buyers, they're able to buy a more expensive home, larger size home, because they can sell it. Uh, once they make the sale, they can use the proceeds as a down payment for the next uh, transaction. But it's the first time buyers uh, facing great struggle in the current marketplace. This is the greater Salt Lake City and of course Provo uh, region would follow some similar pattern. But one thing about this price condition is if you look back to all the way to 1980s, maybe some of you were not even born by then, but this shows that prices do not necessarily rise in a straight line. But if you hold on to it for a long period, it is a gain. Just consider even year 2000, 20 years ago, typical home price in your local market, $150,000. I mean, today it will be a bargain. Even at the top of the bubble in 2007, typical home price were about 250. Even by today's standards, you would say that is a bargain. So home prices rising simply because of the strong local economy, but combine that with the insufficient inventory pushing up prices greatly, challenges for the first time buyers, but great news for homeowners as they're getting all this equity. If we look at the all 50 states, some unique patterns develop. Utah, you see 54%. What does that mean? Currently, more than half of the homes that are sold in Utah, 54% of the homes, they're being sold above this price. This is incredible. I mean, in America, we generally have only about 5% of the home being sold above this price in a normal market. You know, you list the price and you hope you get that price or you, know, you negotiate down and make a deal. Those will be normal circumstances. But today, given the strength of the buyers, uh, that more than half of the homes in Utah are being sold above list price, exceptionally strong. So if we had more inventory, very simple equation, 20% more inventory, meaning 20% more home sales. 30% more inventory probably means 30% more home sales. So the reason why the sales are not clicking is simply lack of inventory. So we need to address many, many angles to see how we can bring more inventory. Maybe reduce regulation because home builders constantly mention too much regulation hinders building or even 1031 exchange. Land sales are done using 1031 exchange, but certainly currently in Washington, they're discussing whether to take that away. There will be a terrible news uh, because it just means that there will be intensified housing shortage. Fewer land sales to the builders means fewer home building activity. So we need to consider everything to how to boost uh, supply uh, because this is very, very important. Uh, President Biden has mentioned about infrastructure spending uh, and maybe part of that infrastructure spending, you know, we have to wait on what the right size is, uh, could be dedicated for somehow uh, subsidizing building of a new home. So, because whatever it is, we need to build more home or repurposing some of the vacant commercial properties. Throughout America, there is empty shopping malls or maybe empty office building. Can it be converted into uh, housing units or empty motel units? But in Utah, even the commercial market is very strong. So you may not have too much vacancies, but uh, something to consider in terms of repurposing to bring more supply. One clean way to bring more supply is to build more homes. So single family, which is shown in the blue chart, is showing a little breakout pattern, some bouncing up and down on a month to month basis, but at least the builders are focusing on single family where the demand is strong. The multifamily apartment building or condominium, essentially neutral, no meaningful increase or decrease but this is what the demand that, I mean, the demand is clearly on the single family. So the builders are responding uh, in a proper way. Why do we have inventory shortage? Well, this is a long-term chart of new home construction. The red line is the historical average. Some years it is above, other years it is below. But look what has happened in the past 13 years. 
13 consecutive years of underproduction. And the cumulative effect of that underproduction is we simply don't have enough homes on the market. So again, we have to make up for this huge underproduction uh, either to assure that 1031 ex exchanges uh, remains in place, uh, maybe reducing lumber tariffs, or maybe trying to, to provide more training for construction workers because there's a worker shortage. Uh, so we need to again, bring more construction onto the market to relieve inventory. One good news is that when we look at the past 12 months, which local market is seeing the greatest increase in single family housing permits? So you can see Provo, Provo Utah uh, essentially doubling from one year before. So this is all your future inventory. It takes several months, you know, maybe five months, eight months to build home, but at least housing permit uh, growth is very strong in your local market. So you can anticipate some inventory showing up later in the year. One concern right now for the housing market is what's gonna happen towards the year end? Because it looks like the mortgage rate will be rising. And why is it rising? When the Federal Reserve has indicated that they do not wanna raise interest rates. Well, the Federal Reserve only control the green line that you see, essentially the lowest interest rate possible. But the red line is the mortgage rates. And the red line pretty much move in sync with the blue line. What is the blue line? Blue line is the 10 year US government borrowing rate. When the US government has to borrow, they have to pay interest rates. And with the US deficit rising, national debt reaching high levels, and also financed partly by printing of the money, some of the people who are funding the US government is saying, look, I feel uncomfortable about this high budget deficit. Therefore, you have to offer me a little higher interest rate. That translates into higher mortgage rates as well. So all the fiscal stimulus to support the economy, yes, it is supporting the economy, but it is not free lunch. People should never assume government spending is a free lunch, it's coming at some expense. And the expense is first large deficit, future generation burden uh, on them, but also immediately higher interest rates, slightly higher interest rates. And I expect by December of this year, we may even hit 3.5% mortgage rates. Uh, that is up from you know, current 3% or the absolute low point of 2.7% back in December of last year. Another concern for the mortgage rate is that inflation rate is beginning to break out much higher. Uh, and the Biden administration has made it clear that they no longer consider the 2% line to be the critical figure because generally economists in the past said 2% should be the sort of the maximum inflation level. Right now, the inflation is 4%. So why does the Biden team consider 2% as uh, not that important? The, the new thinking is essentially that 2% should not be the maximum, but should be the average. So if the last year inflation was zero and this year is 4%, then it averaged to be 2%. So no problem. So the Biden administration is not concerned with the current high inflation because they are saying it averages to be 2%. If we look at the individual item as to where the prices are rising, uh, well, uh, compared to the pre-pandemic, health fares are still lower compared to the pre-pandemic. Some of the tickets for sporting events are a little lower. Uh, the car insurance is tad lower. So if you need to renew your car insurance, they're quoting you a little high, well, search. Seek out a competitor because overall insurance rates are a little lower. College tuition, that did not increase this year, principally because of online learning last year. And I think there's a little frustration among college students. The rents are beginning to increase. It's only rising about 1%. I'm sure much higher in Utah. Uh, moving and storage, as you are advising your clients, tell them the moving trucks are more expensive. The storage units are more expensive. Beef, if you are not a vegetarian, you are getting hit. So the beef price is rising strongly, 7.1%. Appliance shortage, even if the, after you buy a home, you're trying to buy a new refrigerator, you may run into a shortage problem. Appliances are rising. 
Gasoline prices at a six-year high, it certainly hits the realtor's pocketbook because you drive a lot uh, and the gasoline prices are high. Home prices, interestingly, are not included in the consumer price index. The highlighted one is the used car and new car. New car is much more expensive than used car, but the price appreciation is strong in the used car. Uh, implying that there's still some degree of financial anxiety among middle-class Americans, because if they don't have financial anxiety, I think they would buy a new car. But the fact that they want to buy a used car is implying that they want to show some caution uh, condition. But the prices, again, you see some variation across the country. Inflation, I don't think will disappear. I think inflation will continue to build because pipeline inflationary pressure like the producer price index on the construction material, you see it skyrocketing. This includes the lumber prices, all embedded, uh, rising very strongly. Furthermore, the rents. Rents have been rising about 1% from one year ago. But before the pandemic, it had been rising 4%. So why is the rent growth much weaker now? And the reasoning is when the pandemic had many young adults went straight to parents' basement. Maybe they had a job at a restaurant or, or at the hotel, but when those industry closed down, the great uncertainty, people went straight to the basement. But now as the jobs are recovering, they're popping out of the basement and the rental demand is rising. So if the rental demand is rising, it is just a matter of time. Within a few months, these rents will begin to rise which means that we could have persistently high inflation for some time, not only this year, but next year and beyond. And if that's the case, it means higher mortgage rates. Lenders do not wanna lend at low interest rates when there is an inflation because the money that is returned would have lost in value. That's why in the 1970s, mortgage rates were 15%, 16%, uh, when the inflation hit high levels. Uh, so again, stimulus is not a free lunch. It's supporting the economy, but there is some cost to it in terms of higher mortgage rates. This is the uh, job market across the country. And one other thing, unique thing is only two states have more jobs today compared to pre-pandemic. And as you can see, Utah is one of the two states in the neighboring Idaho. All other 50 states have lower jobs now than before. Because in Utah and Idaho, they said, we have to reopen the economy. We know that the virus is dangerous. Please put on masks, please social distance. Uh, so they would not shut down the economy. But in places like New York or California, the governors there said, no, we are going to have a lockdown for a very long time in a restrictive way. Well, it's gonna hurt their economy and you see the uh, job numbers being much lower uh, in New York and California uh, compared to many other states. And here's the US job market over the past 20 years. So from year 2000, there was a slight hump, artificial hump because there was subprime led job creation then the job losses when the foreclosure crisis occurred. And then we had a 10 straight years of job creation longest job creation in American history from 2010 to 2020, right before the pandemic. But in a single month, we lost all that job, 10 years of progress gone in a single month. Now you see some job creation, but we are only halfway there. Note the red line, year 2000, foreclosure crisis in 2010, and the pandemic in 2020. Compare this with your local area. The fact that you are way above the red line consistently is implying that you have much faster job growth compared to the rest of the country uh, and also the uniqueness. You have more jobs today compared to pre-pandemic. Quite amazing, unique circumstance. So something very right uh, in terms of the job market in your local area, strong demand, strong demand for housing, just not enough homes available for sale. The job opening situation currently is at a record high. Uh, and some people are saying, well, it's hard to get a construction workers. It's hard to get people into the uh, lumber mills uh, when you, uh, because job openings are high, 
uh, but uh, companies are having difficult time trying to get those people uh, hired um, for a variety of reasons. You know, some people say generous unemployment benefits, other people say, well, COVID, some people are not uh, vaccinated, therefore they don't want to return. Uh, so uh, whatever the reason, school is not fully open in many states, and therefore single parents do not want to uh, go to work. So right now the situation is job openings are at record high, uh, yet some industry is showing a major labor shortage, construction, lumber mills, um, and in many areas. So what is the forecast? So let me wrap it up with the forecast. So the forecast in 2021 is the first quarter numbers are in, and for the nation, it's up about 12%. I think in your area, it's fairly neutral uh, because you have an invent severe inventory shortage. Second quarter, numbers will be high because we are doing artificial comparison with a lockdown period of last year. And the third quarter, we should be about neutral, but the fourth quarter, because of higher mortgage rate, sales could be a little light, a little bit down about 5%, 10% from one year before. If you assume that this is reasonable, what you get for the annual total in 2021 is uh, you actually have a uh, fastest, strongest home sales since 2006. Simple way to view it is last year, there was no spring buying season. This year, you do have a spring buying season, even though you have that inventory shortage. So the final uh, part uh, is that uh, we are seeing that office leasing activity just not occurring, uh, especially in California, New York, and other expensive metro markets. This is a work from home phenomenon. So what you may see is that some of the people who used to work in Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle, they may decide to say, look, I don't have to return to office. I can work from home. And if I can work from home, why am I in San Francisco? Why am I in New York? And they may begin to go other places which they consider to be a more of a friendly place to raise a family, or maybe you know, there's a hot debate about school curriculum in the US, and uh, maybe they want to uh, choose uh, based on where the, uh, they consider school district matches their preference. So whatever it is, work from home could be a benefit for uh, areas where it is not too super expensive market. So San Francisco may lose some population, uh, New York may lose some population, but many interior sections of the US may be the beneficiary from some of the trend. So e economic forecast, no recession is recovering, but the job growth is a bit sluggish, uh, interest rate rising, uh, and the housing market forecast is that in 2021, the forecast, higher mortgage rates, new home sales, no problem. Existing home sales, I went through the logic as to why it could be 10% higher. Home prices in no danger of a decline, rising 7%. So industry revenue this year should be up about 17%. I hope you can participate in that. And as we go into 2022, maybe a little too early to make those forecasts, but I think interest rate will be even higher uh, and the home sales overall could be neutral because of higher mortgage rates. So even with job creating condition, uh, we may have that situation. So I have, I think, spoken a lot. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Again, you are in an exceptionally strong, unique market. One of the few cities with more jobs today compared to pre-pandemic, just to illustrate the comparison. Uh, so something very right things been done uh, in your local area uh, and best to you. So I am ready for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yearn. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, one note, I got a question, where can we get these slides? I was texted and promised from Kenny that these slides will be made, made available to the association. So. Uh, don't all email Kenny, but uh, they will be distributed out in an email from UCAR. So thank you for this, this great data. Excellent information. I do have a couple questions here. First question is from Jack Andrews, who's actually one of the board of directors for the Association of Realtors here. He says, I've heard of federal proposals for a retained value tax that would in essence tax homeowners for capital gains, even though they still reside in their own homes. Do you have any knowledge or details regarding that? 
Uh, no, I have not heard. Uh, so it could be one of the proposal made by some, you know, extreme, uh, you know, uh, uh, section of, you know, one party, uh, but, it, it, but I don't think it will gain any traction. It just doesn't make any sense from economist's point of view, uh, just to say that, uh, you know, taxing someone, uh, usually a tax occurs from some economic activity, but this is saying, you know, person is not making any decision regarding their home, but to be taxed on it, uh, it simply doesn't make any sense. And I think the uh, overwhelming bipartisan, uh, it was uh, squashed that down uh, if that was to be uh, proposed. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff Harmon says, I have heard that most real estate markets in the USA are real hot, like the Utah market is. Are there any markets in the U.S. that are not doing well? Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually uh, get the, those questions from reporters frequently to say, which market is hot and which is not? And my response is, just about every market in America is hot. First, we have a uniform low interest rates across the country, so that is fueling the demand. But also the pandemic, I think, is leading to extra demand in terms of people who used to live in a small size house or apartment or condominium saying, look, I need an elbow room. Uh, so as they are seeking a larger size home, uh, that's additional demand for housing. Uh, and uh, also uh, we are seeing uh, this reversal of the trend that was happening before the pandemic. Before the pandemic, there was a movement towards downtown living, especially among millennial generation, walkability, restaurant scene, more uh, vibrancy. So people wanted to live in downtown. After the pandemic, complete upside down. People are leaving the downtown area. People are going to the suburbs. People are going to the next county. People are going to smaller towns, rural areas. So we have seen complete reversal of where people want to live. Uh, so this is a, uh, uh, whether or not this is a start of a long trend that will develop in the US or whether it is temporary, uh, we have to wait and see. But uh, right now uh, it is outer suburbs and the next county where the demand is the strongest. Thank you. Our last question is from Brad Belkey, the CEO of our MLS. His question is, what is the possibility of a 40-year home loan coming to the market to help with financing? Uh, I think, uh, you know, some uh, lenders will consider that because, you know, one of the affordability challenges uh, is that uh, people's monthly payment, you know, by extending it to 40 years, uh, you will certainly make it a little bit better. Uh, I mean, my advice is if you can shorten the term, get it. Uh, because you want to pay off debt as soon as possible, you know, whether 15 years, 20 years, uh, but for some people, maybe 40 years makes better sense. Uh, so maybe that option at least should be available and maybe some lenders were trying to come up with a creative uh, way. I don't think Fannie and Freddie is in a position to back it because without the backing of Fannie and Freddie, it just means that it will be private mortgage and private mortgage is less liquid or less available uh, compared to uh, before. But before I end it, I just want to uh, just, since you are right in the Provo uh, Brigham Young University that uh, Bronco Mendenhall, if you remember the coach, uh, he will be returning uh, to your town uh, in autumn uh, because now he's the head coach at the University of Virginia. I mean, my son goes there, I attend the home football games, but uh, he has matched up uh, UVA against BYU at Provo next year. So Bronco is coming back for a day uh, where you can say hello to him. <laughs> Excellent. Dr. Yuen, thank you so much. I'm going to turn you around so you can see this body of realtors. Let's all give Dr. Yuen a thank you.